Hello, welcome to Love and Lordship Live. I'm Greg Williams. Thank you. As I've heard encouraging feedback from the last couple of weeks of our first few radio broadcasts of the Authority of Love, named after our book um, and the ministry, on 99.1 FM WJMM Central Kentucky Christian Radio, or you can check that out on WJMM.com every weekday from 11 to 11.15, or check it out along with previous messages on the podcast link there on WJMM.com. We also launched our first international outreach with six to 10 church and ministry leaders joining us last week from mainly from India and Pakistan. And later today, we'll share a second message with six to seven more leaders. I believe most of them from Kenya this time and next week, some more from Uganda and Malawi and Liberia. So we're so thankful for that and humbled and excited about what the Lord is doing. And with that, we continue, as I've promised, with our Names of God series. We're on part 23. That means at least 70 plus names so far, because a few of them have had more than one, more than three names on the, on the series. I always begin with a, with a verse of scripture that points to God's name, the power of it. In Psalm 4810, the psalmist says, As is your name, God, so is your praise to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is full of righteousness. Some translations say victory. With that powerful attribute of God's name, we jump into three more names today, with the first one being El Echad, one God. In the last book of the Old Testament, Malachi, we find the prophet sharing God's admonishing, encouraging, chastising, and promising Israel of good things to come, and the greatest thing to come, the Messiah. In the midst of this poignant message, Malachi declares a name of God that echoes throughout all of Scripture and all of time and eternity. In chapter 2, verse 10, he proclaims that God is El Echad, one God, which repeats the greatest command given to Moses by God in Deuteronomy 6, 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. He gave that before the Israelites were to enter the promised land. And again, in Mark 12, 29, where Jesus repeats this as the first and greatest command, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. In declaring this again approximately 400 years before Christ comes, and with the silence from God during that same period, God is reminding us of the greatest of truths that we must make our own, and that is that God is one, the only God, and exists as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as one. He is the only one worthy of our worship and praise. Christ tells us very clearly that he is El Echad, one God, as he is one with the Father God. Look at John 10, 30 and John 17, 21 and 22. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit alone are the one God and worthy of our praise. They alone are. He alone is. I know that's not easy for our finite natural minds to grasp, but it's the truth of God's Word, and it's evident throughout. Now, you can get all the Scripture links if you go to www.loveandlordship.com. That's our website, loveandlordship.com, and you'll find the article. This is the Names of God series 20, part 24, I believe. No, it's part 23. Yeah, part 23. Sorry about that. And uh, you will find uh, all the articles, but in each full article, we have the scriptures linked there. Christ has made it so that we can be in a relationship with El Echad, the one God, and worship him forever because of the sacrifice that he made as God in the flesh. We can come into his presence and give him praise and thanks as the one true God. Do you know God in Christ and through the Holy Spirit as El Echad, one God, and as your Savior and Lord? The next name we look at is from the prophet Jonah, who himself was quite cantankerous and rebellious. However, in stark contrast to Jonah's attitude of bitterness and revenge toward the evil Ninevites, he recognizes and calls God by the name Jehovah Hanun or El Hanun, the God who is gracious or the Lord God full of grace. That's found in Jonah 4, 2. After he's witnessed and preached to the Ninevites, they've come to repentance, and he's sitting now moping, going, I knew you'd do this, God. But he recognized that God is full of grace. Boy, do we need that. Nineveh was the capital of the powerful ancient Assyrian Empire. 
The Assyrians were known as the most ruthless and evil people of their day in the way that they conquered other kingdoms and peoples and killed and tortured many of them. Isn't it interesting that right in the midst of this horrifically evil empire and an angry, vengeful, prideful prophet of Israel, God expresses himself through that very stubborn prophet Jonah as Jehovah Hanun, the God who is gracious, or El Hanun, the Lord God full of grace. Isn't that just like God? And thanks to the God of grace that he is. Apart from Christ, we are all just as prone to and involved in sin, evil, pride, and anger as the Ninevites and Jonah. But Jesus came full of truth and grace, John 1, 14 and 16 and 17. He is Jehovah Hanun, the God who is gracious, or El Hanun, the Lord God full of grace. Grace literally means that we receive love, forgiveness, peace, hope, joy, salvation, and eternal life. What we don't deserve and could never earn because Christ paid the price and gifted it to us by grace, the Lord God full of grace through faith. Both the Ninevites and Jonah, as well as you and me, deserve God's wrath and punishment. But he is a God of grace, and Christ is the conduit of that grace to us. Have you received by faith that free gift of grace in Christ? Check out Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 for more on that. Our final name today, let me ask you this. Have you ever struggled with a spirit of revenge when someone, anyone has done you wrong? I found that often those who call themselves Christians can say and do some of the most hurtful things and hold grudges even more than others, claiming righteousness. However, God has a different response that we are to have, and we find it in his name revealed in Jeremiah 51, 56. Yahweh Gomola, the God of recompense. In Jeremiah's prophecies and revelation of God, it is God bringing vengeance on Babylon, part of the Assyrian Empire, right? An enemy of Israel who would go far beyond what God intended when they would take Israel captive as punishment for their rebellion against God. His payback is perfect. Ours is not. We must remember this in our walk with Christ as Savior and Lord, as Paul reveals in Romans 12. Check out that chapter. It begins by, say, being a living sacrifice and don't think too highly of yourself and don't conform to the world. And then it continues throughout several verses there as we know them with ways to live out what God has put in. How we are to live as Christ's followers. In verses 19 through 21, Paul specifically tells us to turn our vengeance and grudges into service and sharing with even our enemies. He says that Yahweh Gamola, the God of recompense, will take care of any vengeance, and we are to know that we can trust him to do so perfectly because that is who he is. John tells us in Revelation that there will be a day that he will bring final vengeance, wrath, and judgment when Christ returns to make all things right. Revelation 20, 11 through 15. Remember, they're all linked at the full article at loveandlordship.com. In Revelation 20, 11 through 15, we find perfect vengeance and judgment from Christ to all who have received him and to all who have rejected him. He is Yahweh Gamola, the God of recompense. I, I pray that you know Christ as Savior and Lord and are willing to trust his perfect recompense as he has paid the price not only for you, but for all who will believe. Share that so many more can believe in him. He is patient and kind, desiring that all will repent. But there will be a day for those who don't do so. Let him handle it and let us keep others pointing to him in repentance, kindness, love, grace, and truth. Let us know at Love and Lordship or loveandlordship at gmail.com. If you have questions, go to loveandlordship.com. Email me at loveandwordship at gmail.com if you have questions or would like to know more. Wrap up with food for thought. Tie this together. Jehovah God is El Echad, the one and only God, who is also El Hanun, full of grace. And that is much needed because he is also Yahweh Gamola, the God of recompense. Have you received Christ who paid the recompense by grace of the one God? Or will you have to pay that on Judgment Day? I pray that you know him. Four action items, the first two should be memorized by now if you've been following us. 
Read the scriptures in this article and ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. Write down, number two, what each name of God in this post means to you. That'll help you not only understand him more, but get to know him and love him more and know how much he loves you. Number three, what does it mean to you that God declares himself as the one and only God? Think about that. Journal that. And number four, what do you see in his names that reflect his grace and his recompense, his punishment, and his undeserving reward or blessing to us? Stay tuned for Love and Lordship Mentoring Minutes coming right up as we do a quick deep dive into God's Word and go a little deeper into the context of these names. You got questions or need help? As I said earlier, Love and Lordship is a safe place, so contact us at loveandlordship at gmail.com or text or call me at 859-229-6504. Now, in today's culture of spam and scams, I may not answer because I don't recognize it, but please leave a message and I will get back to you. If your church or group or organization would like to have Love and Lordship come and share, let us know. Email, call, text, or message me. We'd love to walk with you as the Lord leads. Let us know what you're thinking and how we can help. We'd love to engage with you. Thanks for your prayers. Thanks for your support. Please continue to pray for us. And if the Lord leads you to help this kingdom ministry and calls you to it, would you please support us? If not, keep praying until he shows you who he wants you to support for this kingdom and glory. Our vision at Love and Lordship Every life and relationship built on the love and lordship of Jesus Christ. You see it on our banner there. Our mission, making disciples who make disciples in the love and lordship of Jesus Christ in every home, church, and beyond for his kingdom and glory. Thanks for joining us, and thanks for your prayers. Thanks always to the Lord. Make it a great day, and God bless in Christ.